Hi everyone, it's Cherie from Paper Pieces and Leftovers and today I am bringing one of the Paw Patrol pieces to you to put together. I had started recording it with no intention of doing a voiceover, but my dogs decided to start barking at every single thing that went past our front door or our back door or that they could hear even down the block. So this piece I just showed was that's how I had to glue his arms onto his body, but I had already did it before I realized that I was going to record me piecing this. I had started it and then decided to record as an afterthought, but since that was the only piece done, I figured I would just go ahead and carry on. The hand gestures are not going to mimic what I'm saying now as I did do a voiceover to this and speed it up a little because it was lengthy with all the pauses from the puppy interruptions. So after you get that V-shape, upside down V-shaped part onto the back body, I did go ahead and glue his collar on and his legs are going to go behind uh, the body. That was an eraser because I didn't have my gummy eraser as it was on the desk and I just didn't feel like getting up and getting it. Now, I'm going to glue both of his paws on and then the spots. And in the beginning of the video, I had explained that I had separated the spots, the three that are right above my left hand and the three that are at the top of the left screen by his head those go on his face but those go on at the end and I just didn't want to mix them up or lose them so I try to glue together all of the smaller pieces first and my intention was to put the spots on before I had started gluing but I wanted to make sure the placement was right so I went ahead and glued the paws on before placing the little spots now I have already done this file. This is just another order. So it goes together a lot easier than it does the first time. And you guys watching and following and doing this with me, it'll go easier for you because you have some guidance. For us, it's a lot of playing around and making sure we have the pieces in the right place. But for us, it's also an escape where we can just ignore everything outside of the zone that we're in while scrapbooking, right? Now, when I put the glue on my hand, I learned that from a friend many years ago. If you have super small pieces, you put the glue on your finger and dip your piece into it instead of putting glue on the back. Sarah would always paper piece skinny little letters and I could never figure out why she never had glue smear. And it was that trick she had told me. So I'm passing it along to you guys. I was fussing around with this. My hands were shaking and I couldn't quite get a good grip on it to make sure the hole was punched through the top of the tag. That's that tiny little circle up there on the yellow collar. I wanted to make sure that the piece had come out and I couldn't quite get my grip on that little tag to put my tip of my tweezers through but I got it so that tag I had already put together I did all those as I was cutting them out and inking them because I didn't want to lose any of the pieces I did use Wink of Stella um, or maybe Spectrum Noir one of those it's a glitter pen and it just adds the shimmer to your piece with glitter. You can get clear, white, gold, silver. They have tons of colors. On the back of my eyes and nose, I do have the Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue. I had put that on the back of the eyes and the nose before I started gluing the rest of my pieces together. That way it was dry before I place my eyes and my nose. I've been telling you guys this for a long time and I see a lot of other creators that had started doing it. Some of them say that they just started, but they didn't just start. They started because they seen me do it for many, many videos. And I'm okay with that. I give you guys these tips and tricks so you guys can use them for your own. Um, 
after you put just a small dot on each piece, you leave it face up so it dries. Once it's tacky and it's clear and no longer white iridescent, then that means you can go ahead and place it down and it will lift up. Don't cover the entire eye, it's just a small little dot. That lets me fidget with my eyes to get them in just the right place before I trace them. And here I'm adjusting them because I wanna make sure they're even, I wanna make sure that they're spaced apart far enough, and that's why I kept putting the nose there. And here I realized that the left eye was a little bit lower than the right. I had paused the video there, and I'm gonna pause it again here momentarily. You'll see another glitch. And that was because my dogs were freaking out at the back door. My puppies, I should say. They're wee ones, you know, four and a half pounds and 5.9 pounds. And they're full grown. Lexi is bigger than Callie, which is so funny because she's the younger one. So after I trace the eyes on with a Micron 02 pen, I'm going to go around the eyes with my false eyelash glue applicator I got from Amazon. I did post a link somewhere on my Facebook page for you guys. And since it's in my favorites, I can always give it to you guys if you guys just shoot me a message in Messenger. For some reason, YouTube doesn't always allow me to share the links. Now here I'm going around the eyes with my false eyelash glue applicator but I realized I didn't put her eyelashes his eyelashes on I keep saying her his eyelashes and his little cheek um, rounding markings on so I stopped with my pan pastel chalk above that's what that dark gray pan is and I did the eyelashes that way then I will go back and finish chalking around my eyes now, a trick that I learned many, many years ago, and this is how I practice my eyelashes. I put them on with pencil first so I can erase and correct as many times as I need. And then I go over them with the Micron 005 or whatever fine tip pen you prefer to use. Let them dry for 30 seconds to a minute and then use only a white eraser to erase your pencil marks. And that is how you can, one, get the hang of eyelashes, and two, almost perfect them. And I kept erasing them until I got them just the way I wanted there, as you saw. And I then went over it with the Micron 005, because that's a fine tip, but yet it's bold enough to notice the eyelashes. And that is my electronic eraser eraser that I erased with and it has a white eraser tip it has replaceable eraser tips I think there was 50 in the pack I love it um, I am going to go back around the eyes here the video then will stop and pick back up where her eye, his eyes are glued down that's because I went through and erased all of my smears and smudges and evened them up but I didn't want to do it on camera because as I said in the beginning my whole intention of this was to explain and talk as I was going however I got forced into doing a voiceover because my phone was ringing and then the puppies started barking at everything under the sun and I think even on the video I was like you guys are barking at everything even fly farts and then, of course, they both stand there and look at me, and Lexi smiles at me, and it just makes me want to flicker. I'm like, you're in trouble. This isn't a time to smile, you little brat. So this was the part that I was debating cutting out right here. I was going to edit all of this out. I was having a hard time with these cheeks, and it was because I did not have my blush applicator tool that I used that... I showed you guys many videos ago when I posted the link on my YouTube and my Facebook, mostly my Facebook, at one point. They are called Brush Sticks by Imagine. And I love them because they're a foam tip and they don't shred, kind of like our daubers do, our finger daubers. They don't wear down and fray and shred and fall apart. They're very firm foam. And I couldn't find it when I started scrapbooking and I didn't want to keep getting up and down. 
And I knew where it was, but it was way on the other side of my dream cart. So I tried to make do with a pom-pom and it just doesn't work for me. So I'll do all the cheeks after I'm done. Here I am using the titanium white pan pastel chalk. That is what I use for the little white shading in my eyes. I did leave this part in, that way you guys can see how I do it because I know I'm gathering and garnering new followers and I don't want to leave anybody out and I also don't want to force anybody to have to watch all of my videos from beginning to beginning of time to now to find one specific video that they'd like to learn something about so I left this part in. Now, this is just a white chalk pencil. You can get them anywhere. I picked mine up from Hobby Lobby. Amazon has them. They're all over and everywhere. After I get my little line with the chalk pencil, I then add my dots to the top and the bottom of the white line on the outer part of the eye. And I know at the end when I hold it closer, you can see it better. And also, I will add the completed photo for my thumbnail on my YouTube video, and it'll show the eyes a lot more closer. I'm going to edit the video, though, and pull the screen so you don't have to see all my tools on the left and see if that'll enlarge my piece, maybe by shrinking my work area since I'm working so far to the right of the screen. After I got my eyes done, I went ahead and glued the nose on. Now... You're going to glue the head on to the collar and the body. Sorry, I had to pause it. So you're going to glue the head on to the collar and the top of the body, but not the bottom part of the collar. Just his little chin is going to overlap the bottom. You'll see just a, a smidge. And then his ears. I glued down the side to the actually where the cheek starts to form. That way the ear tip was lined up with the cheek. I know that they were done a little differently in the picture, but I wanted more reinforcement on this. And I didn't want a whole lot of the ear hanging off of the hat that's going to be behind him because I don't want them bent during shipments. So it was just another way to give it some more sturdiness especially for shipping. This is the third set of these little guys that I've made for customers and I just love them. They do get easier. So here's the spots that we set aside earlier. The biggest one you can glue on now, the one that looks like a B, I guess, the letter B, that can go on first. The smaller two, we're going to hold off on those because they're going to get lined up under the brim of the hat. If you want to do it the way the picture shows and the way I'm doing it. If not, you can glue them on wherever you'd like at any time. This is just the kind of help if you want to do it just like the picture. As this is the third set, so it got easier. Now be careful picking them up to glue the back. I picked him up by the bottom part of him and the top of his head. And you saw he folded a little bit, bent, not folded. And that's because the back part of the hat's not on. And that's going to be what gives him support. And I tried to go where the smaller part starts curving off into the bigger part of the hat. I tried to use the round part of the top of his head. And then the bottom, I wanted to make sure I got it over the red part of his body. That way he's sturdier. And his ears, this is what I was talking about why I glued him down a little bit more so there wasn't so much coming off of the hat. I don't want him bent. And here's where the little spots come into play now. I didn't glue that brim down yet because I'm going to lift it up and slide it under. And this is just how I did it. This is the way the picture showed. I know that it was down a little bit more, but I wanted it a little bit higher, and this was just where I chose to place it. I don't know. I don't always go a thousand percent with the picture, and the more I redo a file, I always make little subtle changes, and I add more stuff. The other sets I did did have the glitter on the, the badge on his collar as well. 
So now with this brim, it is okay for the top of his head to show. You'll see a little white spot because the bigger badge is going to cover that. You could see it more looking down at it. The camera angle doesn't show it too much, but right there, that tiny little white spot. The badge that's going to go on his hat's going to cover it. And for this badge, the pattern cut the gray paper to have the paw cut out of it. I duplicated it and contoured it. That way the paw, I cut it out on white paper and the gray is solid. So I just glued the paw on it for a 3D effect. 